Hello and welcome to this walkthrough video on NetX. In this video, I'm going to talk you through all of the main components of what is a very, very useful tool. And you can see we start on the landing page. Now via the landing page, you can access all of the technologies as separate maps. There's also a maps menu. And when you open the maps menu, note that we still have access to the end-to-end -end map which features all of the main technologies in one place, and also the 5G options map, which walks through the different connectivity options available between the device and the 5G core network. Across on the other side, we've also got the API builder. Now the API builder is a 5G specific tool, and it is in and of itself quite a complicated aspect of NetX, and as such, there is a separate walkthrough video available. So we're not going to open the API builder. Suffice to say, through this, you can actually construct your own 5G API calls and add whatever information you want to them and also export them as well. In the Explore menu, this is where you can access all the call flows related to different technologies and any associated network procedures as well. And we will look at these momentarily. Note that on the edges of the tiles, you can also access the technology specific network procedures or call flows directly. So if we open up one of the maps, we'll look at 5G. This map now shows specific 5G technologies. Note that we do have interworking aspects on this map. So if I just zoom in, now I can use the mouse wheel to zoom in, or alternatively, you can actually use the plus and minus in the corner. So what you can see is access to different technologies, interworking points towards different technologies, even though we're on the 5G map. And indeed, if I was to click on 4G network, we would actually slide across to the 4G network map. I'm not going to do that. We'll stay 5G centric for the time being. Now note that you can change the perspective of this map. I'm doing that by holding right click down and just moving the mouse. If you want to reset the map, that's not a problem. There is a reset button as well. So that will take you back to the original view. Now this map is fully interactive. So if I head towards the center, here we've got an AMF, which is part of 5G. Now what I can do is I can click on this AMF and get information related to what this particular network function does. And that capability is across all maps. Every single network function is clickable so you can get more information on that network function. If it is relative to the service-based architecture of 5G, which obviously the AMF is, there will be information on its role within the service-based architecture. And you can see that we can click for more information on the service-based interface that we're offering. If you are a subscriber to our Online Anytime video package, then any related videos will also be in place here as well. So if I click here, it's going to take me straight to a video which explores the AMF. Now, as I rest on the AMF, the AMF is the focus point. So you can see that all of the relevant interfaces connecting into the AMF are highlighted. The colors don't mean anything. It's just so you can eat more easily track the, the actual way in which the interface connects to other network functions. What I can actually do is I can lock that in place. So if I just right click, I can now move anywhere and that AMF connectivity will be locked in place. And I can just click off that with a left click to reset that capability. So isolation of nodes and interfaces is available. So if I right click on an interface, again, it will isolate it so we can see exactly where it's going and what it's connecting up. With respect to the interfaces, you can click on interfaces and again, you can get more information. So once again, I happen to have clicked on a service-based interface so we can see which service-based interfaces are active on N10. And if I click for further information, I will get information about the particular services available on that service-based interface. 
If I click on a protocol based interface, so we'll click on N4 for example, then I will see the protocol stack involved and straight away you can see that on N4 there is a control plane and a user plane. So let's just click on the control plane. You can see what is on this control plane in terms of the protocol stack and when you click on a protocol you can get an overview of what that protocol is but crucially there's also a link to the relevant specification and sometimes this is quite difficult and quite tedious to find the right place to look for it, particularly in terms of the 3GPP specifications. If there's any IETF protocols across the map, which there will be, then we'll link to IETF requests for comments. So if we just take off our isolation there, the map's very complicated, as you can see. Sometimes it is difficult to find what you're looking for. So we've also got a search capability. Now this search capability should work across everything. It should work across all of the interfaces, all of the reference points, and all of the network functions. So if I, for example, look for NWDAF, you can see these are my options as to what is going to be isolated. If I just click on the actual NWDAF, then as you can see, the NWDAF has been isolated on screen. So if you're looking for anything, any interfaces, any network functions, the search capability will allow you to isolate them and find them. And if you just close that down, then the map just resets as normal. Now notice that we do have a picture in picture as well, also to aid with navigation. So this will just orientate you as to where you are on the map. It's particularly useful for the big end-to-end -end map but you can also actually use this for navigation. So as I move around the map, you can see that it keeps focused and including when I zoom in as well, it will identify exactly where I'm looking on the map. So if I just clear that back again, and I'm just going to reset the map. Um, one last point to note, particularly with the 5G map is we're looking at what's called the reference point view of 5G. And there's a little toggle down here for the service-based architecture view. So if we click on that, what it's actually going to do is replace much of the 5G core network with the actual real representation of the 5G core, which is the service-based architecture view. It looks pretty much the same um, in terms of the, the functions that are in there, but it's just highlighting that it's actually not a whole bunch of separate elements. These are all converged elements onto some kind of virtualized infrastructure. So that's our map, and there's lots of information to explore on the map. As I mentioned, if I do click to other networks, it will slide me across to those other networks, and every single one of the maps that we have in NetX works in the same way as the map that I've just explored with you. So if we go back to the main menu, we'll take a look at the call flows and the network procedures. So I'll click on the edge of 4G and what I'll get up is the call flows that are available to watch. Now when I activate one of these call flows, it's going to bring up the main end-to-end -end map. And these call flows are designed to narrate the end-to-end -end signaling flow of a particular call scenario and also the eventual resultant media path. So let's say we're interested in a 4G to 2G call, Volte to GSM. When I click on this, there you see the big main map has now been represented on screen and I can press play. And when I press play, we'll start to get a narration and subtitling of each step along the way. So there we go. The sound switched off at present, but you can see that every node along the way will be looked at on a step-by-step -step basis and there will be an accompanying narrative. So this is you can just sit there and watch this, or if you want to, you can actually just fast forward and hop to the different network elements directly. And eventually, if we keep clicking, we'll go around the map once to talk about the signaling flow, and then we'll go around it again to talk about the actual media path. So there's a bunch of different call scenarios here, and it's not purely call scenarios. There's also some other 
signaling flows that are narrated as well. So if we go back to the main menu, the call flows are very useful in terms of just jogging your memory for particular call scenarios. We've also got network procedures. So with the network procedures, if I open up, well, we'll stick to 4G again. There's a whole bunch of different examples of network procedures. There's a big list for 4G. There's an even bigger list for 5G. And if I click on one of these network procedures, it's a traditional signaling flow. So we've opened up here an attach and default EPS bearer establishment in 4G. And straight away, what you can see is an indication of, again, where you are in the signaling flow. So as I start moving around, our picture in picture will orientate us. Now, what we can do is we can manipulate what we're looking at on screen here. So we don't necessarily need the iconography at the top, so we can get rid of that. We can also zoom out a little bit so we can get more of the signaling flow itself on screen. So you can adjust this to however your monitors are actually set up. So these signaling flows are designed to be color coded. So each of the protocols you find in a signaling flow will have its own color code just to help you differentiate which protocols you're actually looking at. You won't necessarily be able to remember all of the color patterns, but it's obvious when a protocol actually changes in the network. What you can actually do if you're walking through a signaling flow with somebody, if you select the highlighter element, you can actually click and isolate a particular message as well, which is useful if you are discussing a flow with other people. Now, our signaling flows are actually searchable. There is a search bar in the top right hand side. So if you're looking for a particular message, then you can use the search function to find that message. And some of these messages are actually clickable and openable. So if we click here, you can see that on the left hand side, we've got a faded message. That's telling us that it's not clickable. On the right hand side, our message, if we actually click on it, will show us a decode. It's just an example and it's been sanitized, so there's nothing sensitive in here. But it, we can click on expand all to, to actually show all of the data in there. We can click on full screen to just open up the real estate used on screen. So the search capability will actually work across these decodes as well, if decodes are available in the trace that you're looking at. Notice in the bottom left hand corner as well, there is a video icon there and if I open up the video, that will actually play a short video narrating this particular flow. Now I will point out that not every single signaling flow, not every single network procedure does have clickable decodes. So where we've got them, we have added them and there's a lot of 4G procedures that do actually have them. So this is our network procedure and there are many many different examples of network procedures again across all of the different technologies. So as you can see from our walkthrough there's a whole raft of different useful features of NetX for you to explore. We are always adding more information, we are always updating NetX so please do take the time to take a look. You will see that it is a very, very useful reference tool. And the last thing to point out that we're quite open to suggestions on NetX. So if you're, if you're a license holder or you're a subscriber to our online anytime package, feel free to contact us with any suggestions. We will evaluate them and you may see them as features in the future.